All right, welcome back, guys. Um, we are flying from. Uh, it's a short, intermittent flight from uh, Yiva Airport to Tapini Airport. We have no load whatsoever. We're just gonna hop over, grab the uh, load, and then go over to KOR, where it's gonna give us a nice. Yeah, Jimmy's found a nice little earner. Nice amount, yeah. Here's flaps. Welcome to the airport. Start taxi. Oh, here we go. Oh, a little bit wobbly there, mate. Yeah, no worries. Oof. It's under control. <laughs> I didn't give it full power, that's why. As long as you're safe, as, dude. As long as you're alive. As long as I'm alive. He's alive. He's alive. <laughs> right. Which airport are we at, Jim? YXE. Uh, Yorona. Are we going to have issues with the uh, air hauler? Yeah, because I didn't start the last one. I think it's going to throw a bitch fit. Well, I suppose I could go from AYWO and just fly straight through to you, couldn't I? Okay, so I'm going to just hot tail it, Jimmy. I'm going to try and um, get to you ASAP. If I can catch you up, that'd be awesome. Take off cams. Take off cam. Wow, I can see you. How is that possible? I guess you're not out of range, as it were. Absolutely gorgeous up here in the clouds, Jimmy. I think that's what we've been missing in those first few missions. You don't have to have a job to fly, but you just need to tell Air Hauler that you're doing a route. Well, that's why I asked you. Does yeah. it track me automatically? Well, it will track you if you tell it to track you. Well, you say that now, but I completely forgot that I have to go through that process. That's why I asked. See, what used to happen with um, Air Hauler 2 was that you'd set it up in air hauler you hit the button and it loads Microsoft or whatever game it is you're playing and then it loads all the information in like your fuel, your weight your destination, it used to do the whole lot but it doesn't do that in Microsoft Flight Simulator and it's the whole process is far more um, manual than it ever has been before We're cruising quite happily, 130 uh, knots and 12,000 feet. Oh, you're, you're practically going to catch up to me. Hopefully. I'm doing 120. Hopefully. So you are one of uh, two people that I've flown uh, co-op with. Oh, game. Cool. Who else did you co-op with? Uh, C 
in game VR. Okay, cool. Is he going to join the VR? No, VA? VA I, I, I don't think so. He doesn't speak English, so... My Greek isn't that good, as you well know. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's best we leave uh, applications to uh, native English speakers. Well, to be a pilot, I believe you have to speak English, don't you? Absolutely. English is the is the language of aviation. <laughs> to be an international pilot, that is. I'm not sure about GA. Yeah, it's it's English everywhere. Even in Greece. So if you look at your map on the right hand side or the lower uh, so southwest I guess there's a, a river that sticks out about halfway across the uh, Halfway across Papua New Guinea, how close to that are you? I'm crossing over it now. Oh, okay. As we speak. So, uh, yeah, you're not... You're about one and a half to two plane lengths in front of me, I think. If we're talking about the same river. Yes. Because it's got, it's got a, a river right beside it that's going north, more north. Going north, yeah, more north. And it also forks, the one I'm talking about yeah. at the end, yeah. Yeah. Sounds yeah, like the same the one. one. Yeah, cool. That's proper VFR flying there when you look at ground details. So yeah, I'm gonna um, I'm gonna take a look at these apps I was telling you about earlier and see if they're any good. Absolutely. There's like, uh, there's a pro version of them, and there's like um, a free version, which has all the functionality but has adverts. So, uh, depending on how intrusive they are and how good the app is, will yeah, basically absolutely. dictate how you want to proceed with them, or maybe not. I just think having um, a VFR map on your phone instead of on the screen would just look nice. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And Day again, and night, especially if I could get the uh, yeah. head tracking fixed. Yeah, yeah. I think that's going to be our next priority. Just trying to make that work. Yeah. I'd really appreciate it. But tell us a bit about Canada, Jimster. Somewhere I've always wanted to go. It's on my wish list. Well, Canada. Again, huge wilderness, beautiful parks, large forests, uh, acres and acres of them. The thing is, come fall, everything just becomes uh, beautiful, beautiful, picturesque landscape with millions of colors you got purples browns greens yellows reds just mixing and intertwining like all the leaves just completely change color and it's absolutely stunning to see during the fall period reminds me of um a park in order shop where I used to live when I was very young. We used to, my mother and I used to walk through it to get to school. So mm -hmm. we saw it through the seasons and uh, yeah. I have very similar sounding fond memories of that. 
So we would take a trip from uh, Montreal to Quebec. And uh, just that ride alone is like going through paradise. Oh my God, a streak of lightning just crossed right across my screen. <laughs> I'm not talking vertical, I'm talking horizontal line. Oh my god. That was stunning. Did you get it on video? No, but I could get it now. I got time play on. So I saved the last 20 minutes. I really need to get that screenshot. That was crazy. I know it's the last few seconds of the, of the video. It's not going to be hard to find. Yeah, like I was saying, uh, that trip alone, that three hour trip, it was just endless, endless color changes. No matter where you look. How would you, um, so trippy, how would you take that trip? Would you drive? Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of people in Canada seem to fly, flying in Canada. No, no, we, we usually drove. What about wildlife? Didn't didn't see much of it. I wasn't the uh, hunting type or the uh, wilderness type. Uh, we did have a mountain close to our like right in the city called called Mont Royal where everybody would go. But it was more of a park park area and not so much. You'd see the occasional squirrels and beavers and stuff like that, but. Nothing too wild. You'd really have to go to a zoo or uh, some kind of uh, national park to go see uh, bears or anything of the sort. Maybe red fox or wolves. I just had a similar streak of lightning, Jim. <laughs> That's crazy. Oh, that was a big lightning strike. Wow, my whole dashboard just lit up then. I guess you call it an electrical Lightning? storm. Yeah. Probably, yeah. So you must be right on the airport now, right? I just have to line myself up over this ridge and turn back. Because it is in a valley and we have to go yeah. in that valley. First set of flaps going in. Weird, as I still don't see you. I 
got eyes on me. Alpha Yankee Tango India traffic Sierra Victor Golf Romeo 1 miles west 3,600 feet inbound to land runway 27. Landed. Oh. Taxi and park. That was poor. Landing was very hard. Modern hey. <laughs> That's my good buddy. <laughs> it flew right over you. That was awesome. I had a terrible landing. I let my speed get too low. I wasn't paying attention. This rolls so well when it's on the ground, this aircraft. Right? Those 35 inch wheels, buddy. Tap back to air hauler to offload forward slash load cargo and fuel. It's a long you can flight. Now return to the MFS main menu. It was. Uh, landing. Positive. That's good. What was yours? Awful. Very hard. <laughs> Time to repair. I'm at 79. But I'm thinking if we repair now, will it take time off and we won't be able to do the job? Um, I think that's the case, yeah. Plus, you know, 77 isn't awful. So we should keep it at uh, the way it is. Yeah, I think it'll be all right. <laughs> Although we'll it is cheaper to repair yeah. at our base than anywhere else. So. Right. But we lose the job. Yeah, which we don't want to do, obviously. Right. All right. Let's go to available cargo job. Hey! 